Hey, I'm Mitch. I'm Colin. We uh, are the proud owners of Bonvoy. We're excited for you to be able to take, take this baby for a spin and camp and enjoy parts of Utah and the Great Mountain West. Uh, we just want to show you a few things before you get on the road so that you feel confident in this car that you're taking, but frankly, this home that you're taking too. And so we're going to give you a little whirlwind tour of that right now. Oh, hi there. So here's what we got in the dashboard driving area. Uh, this is like any other vehicle you've probably driven before. Uh, old school key. Sorry, no push button start here. I'm going to turn it over. Sometimes it feels like locked. That just might be because the steering wheel got moved a little bit. And then you just turn it over. It should turn over just fine. I'll beep at you. Buckle up, please. It's the law. I'll turn this off for now. Well, maybe just so you can see a little bit of our controls here. In the middle, you've got a stereo system. It has a Bluetooth capability. Uh, auxiliary in. You can also plug in a USB drive with music or you can uh, plug in a USB cord for your iPhone and it will connect. Android you have to do Bluetooth or auxiliary. Um, down here we've got a fan in the back. This actually doesn't do hot or cold air in the back but it does blow uh, the ambient temperature air which is helpful sometimes and this controls your upper area. You've got four levels of air through the different areas. It's got a nice mechanical feel to it. It'll make them like they used to. Uh, we have a kind of a auxiliary cord here for you that you can use as well as a charging cable for iPhone. Um, if you do need to charge something, you can plug it in here. We also have a plug in the back. Um, in the dash area, uh, we'll reset the miles for you every time. The control to, to change the driving is down here. And uh, what else? Over here on the side is where you're gonna turn on your brights. And then when you do have your lights on, you can dim how bright the, or, or dim the lights are there. And then we've got windows that will automatically go down and they automatically come up. Occasionally you'll see this window kind of get stuck and come back down. It's just a little sensitive. That's okay, we still love it. Remember what it was like when you didn't have cruise control? Well, now you can remember no more. This baby doesn't have cruise control, so you just got to drive. But uh, one thing to remember, this is not your blinker over here. If, it, if you make it your blinker, you're going to look like a fool on the road. So just make sure it's in the right steady space. Also, this push-in controls the back window um, uh, windshield wiper as well. So uh, just be cognizant if that's on or off. Uh, that's how you honk a horn. This is our Eurovan with the uh, 1999 V6 engine. It has a 21 gallon tank and it uh, will go up to 80 miles an hour. We recommend staying around 75 and less than 4,500 RPM. It'll get about 21 miles to the gallon if you keep it under that uh, speed. This is where you fill, in, fill up the gas. It's a 91 octane or ethanol free, the gas type, 91 octane or ethanol free, preferably. Uh, gas cap comes off with no string attached, so just keep track of it as you're filling the tank. Also, one thing to note, it doesn't have one of the sensors that you may experience in your more modern cars, so the gas will want to uh, come out, so just be uh, cognizant of as you're filling gas to not overfill. You hungry? We got you taken care of. First of all, we took out the fridge and just replaced it with a cooler. It's nice because it rolls out. You can take it into your home, get it stored up, and get the fridge, go to the grocery store and get it all loaded up. We have storage space for you here, either in here, down in this big old hall. We have some shelving space still for your, um, for your other foods and things that you purchase. But the way you want to cook it is under this beauty. You're going to have to pull up the clips on both sides at the same time. And then it kind of releases. It's got a hydraulic that keeps it held up. I can turn on this light here for you just to give you a little more light. Got a sink. You can just flip the faucet on. It just runs cold water. We have a 12-gallon water tank and an 8-gallon holding tank. We call that gray water. And so that's where the, the gray water goes. That'll be something we ask you to empty um, on your way home. This is the oven, you just pull, or the range, excuse me. You pull this lock control off, pull up one flip. I put this fly out first, then lift this up. You're gonna thread it through this little tab here, and you pull the tab and twist, and it'll kind of lock it in place. 
Then if you want to start this beautiful little thing, we will have a ladder here ready for you. And you can just turn, turn and burn. That's how you work the kitchen. Right, so when you want to turn this thing into a dining area, we have two tables here that are hooked in for your traveling purposes. And you can unhook. I'll just show you one table for now, but you can see there's a single leg. You can lock in. And what you got here are these little grooves that fit into the grooves here. You just gotta lift it up. Okay. Is it there perfect it all is. the time? No. Now it's money. And you can slide it all the way up and down to the seat in the back where my lovely film man is. Or else you can bring it here. And I'll show you how you turn the other chairs around. Swivel chairs, did they come around in 2020? Heck no, they were in 1999, baby. Came with this seat. So what we're gonna do is you gotta kinda do a little bit of a dance with this seat to get it to turn. The main thing is to know that when you lift this lever, it allows for the chair to turn. But you also need to pull it forward first to make it turn easier without hitting this stuff. And then you can kinda just swing it around and boom, you got yourself another seat. You can do the same thing with the driver's seat. One thing to note, when this chair is turned around, your car will not start. Obviously this table is easy to install. Let me show you how easy it is to take off. You pull it off. You might say, oh, it goes in. Wrong. Ha! Just give it a little chop out. The, 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 the hinge goes out. We're done. One of the beauties of this van is also that it has a furnace if the nights get cold. Just operates like a standard thermostat. Um, you've got a temperature control right up here where you put in your desired temperature. And right down here is how you turn it on. Just on and off. Uh, once you turn it on, you'll hear the fan kick on. You'll hear the furnace turn on. It's pretty slick. Uh, and then when you're not using it, we ask that you just turn it off. It's uh, It comes and it blows right down here. So this is where all of your heat will come out. And... Um, yeah, that should be it. So you may also notice that there's a old school uh, circuit looking board here, and this is where you read your levels. So here's our holding tank. This is your gray water. It's what your sink drains into. It's eight gallons, and so right now it's empty. Uh, there's your fresh water. It's a 20 gallon, 15 gallon tank, 12 gallon tank, and right now it's a third full. And then you've got your LP gas. That's for your furnace, your stove, that's your propane. So that is full. So you can always just check your levels. This battery is not your car battery, it's your auxiliary battery for charging all of your various things. So this, this van has two batteries, one's for driving and one's for recreation. So right down here, we've got a little outlet and we've got, it's got two plugs and it's also got two USB ports. Uh, this is where you can charge your iPhone, your Apple Watch, your whatever you need at night when you're camping. Um, you just flip a little switch right down here on the very bottom and you'll see this green light turn on. That means you are good to plug in and charge whatever you need. Um, and then you just turn it off when you're not using it. You'll notice there's also a plug here. This plug is for when you're plugged in at a campground. I would just recommend just not even worrying about this. Just use your power plug down here all the time. We also recommend not using high voltage equipment on this. Uh, so a griddle, a hair dryer, those things are a no-no for this power. Uh, you can use a laptop, uh, yeah, a phone, watch, that kind of thing is, is totally fine. If you do notice that your battery is getting low, uh, this battery is recharged when you drive around. So if you're staying camped in a long, uh, for a long period of time in the same spot, just give it a drive around every day or so and, and that will keep your battery nice and full. Now the sleeping part of this van. We'll show you how to pop and how to pull out the bed. So you'll notice right up here there's two little levers. These levers release the pop top. So you click and click and then you gotta put your shoulder into it and just kind of lift it up. You'll feel some resistance. That's not because it's heavy. That's more to do with the hydraulic system, so it's not gonna collapse on you, but just slowly push it up. And just like that, I'm six foot four and I've got plenty of room up here. 
Uh, you may have noticed I also unbuckled this seat belt while I was doing that. You can unbuckle that before you press the levers and, and then you can good to go. Uh, there's the sleeping area up here. That's where you can, it's, I'm, again, I'm six foot four and I can sleep up here comfortably. And then you've got a zipper, windows all the way around. And those will give you some good circulation and some stellar views. When you're ready to have the area to cook with, cook in, you'll wanna move this section of the bed back. And just like that, two tall brothers can stand around in this van and we can cook easily, we can use the space effectively. Well, that's what's going on up top, what's going on down below. We're gonna pull this bed out. First step is to slide the bed out and then we're gonna lay it flat. So to, to slide the bed out, we pull this lever here. I like to sit on it, I just give it a little scoot with my boot. Bring it all the way out, you'll feel it kind of lock into place. And then the next step is to grab this other lever and you'll see it tilt the chair. Also note that there's some storage here for your onshore, off, uh, sorry, your onshore power. We have a, a extension cord there. The seat belts are gonna slide down through the seat. They kind of just disappear. So when you do need to recover those, if you have seat people sitting in the back, you kind of just have to fish your arm down there and pull them back out. But now you have the beginning of a flat bed here. I've got a mattress that you leave in the back that you can just simply pull out and throw over. You'll notice we've left some of these uh, blackout blinds essentially for front seats. We'll talk about those in a sec. But now, my friends, you've got yourself two beds. What happens in the van stays in the van unless you want to show people and that's fine. But if you want a little privacy or just get the lights out at night, we've got blinds all the way around this, mostly through these cool accordion, you grab the tabs in the middle and they connect through Velcro. And there you go. Perfectly blackout? Uh, no, but they do give you full privacy. So what we're gonna do to take them apart is just gently kind of peel them and then kind of let them go slowly. Please don't try to let them fly back too hard. We've got one big sheet that can go across the front dash to help black out a lot as well as give privacy. And then for the sides of the van, we don't have blinds here. What we end up doing is it's kind of oversized and you kind of just do this. You kind of just give it a quick little slam and you can lock it into place. And that gives you real extra privacy and darkness. Now we're just putting this lower bed away. We fold this mattress up. And then in order to put this seat back, you just do exactly what we did before. Lift this lever, and that will allow the seat to fold. And then you pull this lever, and slide it back. Now we're just putting this other bed away. We've got one board. You need to slide towards the front. What you want to be sure of is just that this stays right on the track where it's intended to go. There you go. You can see how it's lined up on the rails. Everything's rested down. There's our view window up here. And now, when you pull this down, open the window and grab the handle, but pull mostly from the window. So it's gonna be kind of a slow process, but you'll slowly pull it down, down, and then you seat belt it in. Now what you wanna do is these little hooks are gonna go down into this hole. And this fabric really wants to get into the way, in the way every time. So what we're gonna do is just kind of pull it down and, and try and keep that fabric out as much as possible. And there, just give it a nice pull on the skylight. Nice pull on the skylight there. And you can put your fingers in that hole and you can feel, we can't really show it on camera very well, but 
you'll be able to feel that there's two little metal clips that have that are now touching and the pop top is secured now that you've closed the pop top you just need to push the little edge of it in you'll be able to see kind of on this other side a little bit better but this will just create a nice seal and make sure that nothing's getting wet or you don't get any wind whistle or anything like that so now it's all secure what goes down that drain i don't really care to see ever so we ask that when you return the van please return it with the gray tank empty the gray tank is really mostly just going to be your sink water or your toothbrush bit or something like that you simply remove this cap and you can just release this lever. It'll pour out, close it back up, cap back on, you're good to go. If you are going to a campsite that does have onshore power for you, then you can flip up this lever, grab that um, extension cord that's underneath the seat, plug it in here, plug it into their onshore power, then you'll have access to those outlets. You can probably more confidently use power without worrying if it's draining the battery. So we talked about the sink where the water was back there. You'll also notice this very convenient sprayer. We find ourselves using this sprayer more than even the sink for brushing your teeth, washing dishes, that sort of thing. There's a little switch here. This will turn the water pump on. And now you can spray and do your thing. Some people use it as a shower. That's aggressive, but you can do that. And then you can just fish it right back in there. Notice next to it, for longer trips, you may need to fill back up with water if you're going for more than six days than you will but honestly less than six days you'll be just fine with the amount of water that we have in the tank uh, a couple other storage areas we've got um this is sort of your emergency area we hope not you we hope you don't have to use anything but we've got a uh, jumper battery pack here for you in case you get stuck in the desert uh, with no power we can jump your battery yourself and we have a tire uh, pressure pump and we also have a tire monitor so you can check the tire pressure again this is an area we hope you never have to use but want to be sure you're equipped in case you do same with the medical kit um the rest of this area is is kind of up to you how you want to use it these are some tips of how we like to use it when you're washing dishes we kind of use this as a area where you can stage your dirty dishes you can spray them down um, we also will supply you with buckets for for cleaning uh, when you put these away you'll notice another storage area here don't worry about that that's more just kind of utilities tape uh, that kind of thing that's where the auxiliary battery battery is as well and then down here is where we store a uh, mat or when you're pulled up to a campsite, this mat's about eight by 10, and you can lay it out in front of your, your van area and you can have more of an indoor-outdoor area. And then we have some leveling blocks that you can use to level if you're uh, camping on a hill. The storage area is you can use however you want, um, but we have towels and pillows and sheets in here for you we have not provided uh, sleeping bags or kind of oversized blankets for to sleep with uh, we just have the, the sheets and the pillows and the pillowcases so if you bring your own comforter or blanket or sleeping bag we're often asked so what's included in this thing great question i'm going to try to give you a little walk through some of the things that we're going to include for you so you don't have to pack everything so a couple of things we got for you nice cooking pot inside the cooking pot is also a tea kettle so you can have some more tea or bring your bring your own coffee if you want coffee uh, we do have this pan that comes out then we all like eggs when we're doing a little camping probably so a non-stick pan is pretty helpful when you're ready for dishes at the end of all that cleaning we do have bucket for you a couple buckets and some rags we like dr bronner's it's a good natural cleaning agent um, we're going to include for you four bowls four plates we got this wonderful shoe box full of magical things knives spoons uh, forks for a group of four people 
some spatulas, some uh, some tongs, all sorts of items just to make things a little easier for you. We have trash bags with, the, and then we also have a um, an egg protector for you with the trash bags. Just one comment there. Sorry, it's a little noisy. We have this compactable little trash bag for you. We ask that you use it zips up at night so it keeps things less stinky and uh, hopefully that makes you feel a little more comfortable. Obviously, we're also including that sand mat that we showed you, um, also camper chairs and a little camper table for two. And we're just excited for you to use all this stuff.